Hey, happy Thursday. Atilio and I were just commenting how uh, cold it suddenly is. Yeah, I was going to get a uh, coffee refill just now, but <laughs> just missed the cutoff. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I hit live and uh, here we are. Uh, but with that, you know, seasons are changing. I think specifically we're about four weeks away from Thanksgiving. We're about, you know, seven-ish, eight-ish weeks from uh Christmas and the new year, essentially. And a couple of things that I know to be true after being in this space for a couple of years is most practice owners want to and need to slow down uh, during this time. They feel busier. There's travel, there's family, there's pressure, there's kids out of school. You know, there's so many things that kind of fill this space and fill it uh, full, <laughs> separate from just the ongoing business stuff. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, an emotional and tangible approach to navigating the next uh, eight, six to eight weeks successfully, tied with, especially if you want a great 2024, if you want a helpful, strategic, life-changing 2024, what are the things we need to do now to set ourselves for a great January 1st and beyond? Yeah. With that being said, let's dive in. I, I love that we're bringing this up like exactly now. This is probably the single best time to do any of your strategic planning for the year. Um, just because things start getting crazy, you start being less available, you start realizing maybe something's broken, or maybe you didn't come as far as you wanted to. Um, and, and I think that this is also the time when um, you get to kind of realize whether your data is maybe in place whether as you're sort of making some of these decisions, hey, can you even make these decisions with data? Can you make these decisions with uh, the information that you have at present? And so I think it's kind of uh, digging this up is sort of like a really, really tricky moment right now. Um, I We actually just went through a really, really big planning event for our business. We did a, a bunch of new strategic decision making. We had a uh, an a awesome Navy SEALs company just come into our company and just tear it up, tear up the ground so that way we could uh, <laughs> maybe plant some new plant some new seeds and stuff. And so it's a really healthy rhythm here at the end of the year, especially maybe at the beginning of November, uh, before things start getting way too busy, for you to maybe take a look at a few things. Yeah, I think Number one is time is arbitrary when it comes to strategic planning. Uh, the best time to plant a tree was either today or 20 years ago. So I think that's just the first perspective is January 1st is actually arbitrary. It is good. Life, people, rhythms, uh, insurance benefits, on the list goes. You know, we do transition a lot of stuff at the start of the year. But at the end of the day, especially to, you know, think from Thanksgiving to the new year, we just see like it's full of a lot of things. So if we can really take between now and Thanksgiving to put a strategic plan in place that then really starts to implement once you have the capacity, January 2nd and beyond, it really opens the road for a clean highway. Because if we wait until January 1st or January 4th or whatever it is, we're not giving ourselves the credit, the momentum, or even the space to to work on and execute at the volume that we need. But also at the same same point, um, I, I would just encourage you, and I see this a lot, is maybe release some pressure around November and December being great months inside of your practice. If that's something that's really stressing you out, if you're like, just acknowledge what capacity you have across the next eight weeks and just set expectations accordingly. But with that as a challenge to some of you, we see it on the other end is there actually is a lot of availability and capacity. We have seen practice owners grow significantly in the months of November and December for two big reasons. Number one is that some people are taking their sort of pedal off of the gas um, during this season, which means there's space to advertise, to hire, to onboard, like there, there's space to solve problems internally and externally, uh, especially because other people aren't spending time and resources on them. The other thing is, is, you know, that regardless of what people say, 
We have to figure out how to solve problems and build business year round if we want a sustainable, consistent, stable business. There are seasonalities of it, but we have to figure out how to be a good business during the winter season, as much during the summer season, as much during the other seasons of our life. So I just encourage you that if you can treat your business sort of as a separate entity from yourself, know your personal capacity, but then also understand that your business is there to grow whenever you want to show up for it appropriately. And for some of you, you need to take the challenge that the holidays is not a good excuse not to press in. And for others, you just need a really blunt, honest look to say, I probably don't have the capacity. So I need to let go of um, I need to let go of the guilt and the pressure for these to be great months and to, you know, have have phenomenal months in November and December. Yeah. I I love that idea. Some people are some people are taking their foot off the gas. Some people are putting their foot on the gas. Um, I think whether it's summer, summer slump, or whether it's in the winter, or whether it's you know throughout the year, if you've ever found something, if you want to grow, uh, there's always space to grow. And yeah. I think I think there is this there's this idea that. Uh, you are controlled or you are restricted by maybe certain seasons or otherwise. And it's funny. It's the practice owners that think that and believe that, that somehow always end up victim to that. And it's the practice owners that don't believe that end up not being victims to yeah. those circumstances. And so I just want to encourage you guys be clear about what you want. Um, this is the time yeah. to be extremely clear about what you want. Um, I, I yesterday because it's fresh on our minds uh after getting torn up from our navy seals team <laughs> that came into our business and, and and showed us sort of what was going on um i realized that josh and i weren't clear on a few goals and that's and, and it's it, it's maybe like semantics it's like small goals that you're not clear about but especially if you have a business partner and you're not clear on exactly your goals it makes it really hard to shoot for the same exact goal you know, yeah. and, and even the difference between are we trying to go fast or are we trying to go big can be massively different when it comes to how you're playing out this this planning season and even the next year or two or five years of your practice journey. And so I want to encourage you guys to get super clear, get super, super clear. Um, even if you have to say it a bunch of times, um, until, until you finally are like, all right, this is the thing that me, my team, my organization is going to align around. And yeah, so um, take that, just that, a little bit of time. Go ahead. That clarity is, is a great segue of like, what are the things that we want you to get clear about for next year as a practice owner? I'll start with two elements here. Number one, let's have clarity in the next two to four weeks, how much time you need to spend strategically planning. That's the first favor you can do for yourself. The days, the volume of hours, the shape of it, the outcome you want and needs to look like. Put time on the schedule. Your schedule is a reflection of this process. Do you need a half a day planning with yourself and your team? Do you need multiple days of planning? Have you ever done true, great strategic planning before? Maybe do you need help? Do you need a facilitator? Do you need a roadmap for what is possible? Ask yourself, what do you need and how much time do I need to set aside? Because if you just like, yeah, I know I need to strategically plan, but you don't have clarity on how much time you want to set aside to give it and do it. Well, that's, that's not going to go as well as we want. Clarity on there. And now we get to talk about then the nuts and nuts and bolts of where should we start. I think, you know, the advice that was even given to us yesterday that was really helpful. If we suspend belief on how we're going to accomplish it, or if we're currently even on the trajectory to accomplish a certain goal, if you could accomplish anything by the end of 2024, what would that be? Specifically nuanced uh, would, if you say, man, I wish I had more freedom in my business. What, what is that measured against? How many hours in the business? If you could have it any way, would you be truly working on your business by the end of 2024? How much revenue? How much profit? And then ultimately, what is the one you care about most? Meaning, I would love to work 10 hours a week in my business, but if I'm working 10 hours a week and I'm not making $200,000 of take home or $500,000 take home, eh. So suddenly we start to prioritize time, 
freedom, stability, accessibility, impact, we have to come up with a North Star and a direct measurement point that by the end of 2024, regardless of whether it's possible or how we're going to get there, what is the primary outcome you would love to see come from your business? How do you want your business to affect you and your life in the biggest and most primary way by the end of 2024? Yeah, and I think the big one here is suspend disbelief. Um, and it's so hard. It's, yeah, it's really hard because sometimes you're like, well, I could never take less than 20 clients. I could never take less than 10 clients. Uh, my my cash won't allow me to, to make that happen. Or my my team is relying me relying on me to take these types of clients or my clients are relying on me which yeah. maybe that is the case in, in this and, case but and i'll just put one out there that we hear a lot i could never hire 20 clinicians in 12 months and then the because is the real kicker here and we'll dive into this in a second but because the quality of care wouldn't be maintained or i couldn't control that or because whatever. And it's usually quality of care that's number one because you care a lot about the quality of the care. You trust the quality of care you have and maybe your first couple of clinicians, you're like, man, no way could I either be a practice of 20 or a practice of whatever. But for some of your other goals, profit, freedom, flexibility, those aren't possible without hiring 10, 20, 30 more clinicians over the next couple of years or doing it quickly or some of those things. So yes, suspend belief in order to come up with the goal and then from there, especially look at maybe why would you say it's not possible and because of what reason? And can we come up with a strategic plan? So if you're like, I shouldn't or I couldn't hire 20 clinicians because of quality of care, well, there's probably a roadmap and a game plan to still do it and ensure quality of care if that's the number one thing that we're concerned about. And if we solve for that, if we implement a solution and a strategic plan around that, then we can actually reach that goal in the way that we want to reach it. Yeah. Some of these levers are kind of tied up weird behind the, uh, behind the scenes here. You'll, you'll try to pull one lever down and the other level pulls up automatically. And so one, one of those levers that I find here, uh, you know, you touched on it just briefly, but it's like speed. If you want yeah. speed in certain cases, maybe you have to sacrifice in certain other elements. If you want speed, maybe profits drop really low right? Or if you want high revenue, maybe another lever changes when you inextricably move them, right? And so what I'd encourage you guys to look at is can you find a win-win path or is trying to find the win-win path the thing that's making you really muck up your wheels? Yeah. And so sometimes there is no win-win. Sometimes you just do something one way and it pulls the lever the wrong way and you're like, ooh, and you just try to figure out every best way to move that lever up while keeping the other lever high. Yeah. And so sometimes that takes a while though, right? Maybe you can't get the win-win in one year's time, but maybe you can get the win-win in two or three or five years time. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just share a, a couple things here. For for me, we, we had a couple strategic goals for 2023, but on sort of like a front facing marketing perspective, the the big thing that came to mind was I want therapy flow to be known by the end of 2023. And that's kind of what I was trying to accomplish. And there was like, great, if I truly want to be known as a brand, as an element, as people who get phenomenal fast, great, competent results for practice owners in different spheres for helping them fill their caseloads and scale their group practices. What activities do I need to do daily, weekly, monthly to make sure I'm known in multiple buckets and multiple ways and multiple spheres for the correct things? And that was kind of a guiding force. And then I had to put measurable numbers against that and process. That was one of the biggest strategic outcomes I wanted in the year of 2023. Uh, and, and so a couple other questions as you guys think about what you want out of or from or to accomplish within your business. Uh, you know, what's your dream revenue for next year? Uh, what's your ideal practice size? How many clinicians would be on your team in, in a perfect world, right? How many hours a week are you working by the end of 2024? How much is your take-home profit, which is different than revenue, right? What new things do you want to start doing and what things do you need to stop doing next year? 
Uh, who do you need to hire to reach your goals? What's going to get in the way? What are you ignoring in your business or about yourself that you don't want to admit or you don't want to look at that you should look at next year? And what changes need to be made to your calendar to the reflect the business you want to see? And that's the last one that I'll, that I'll end on is I've been shocked at the amount of times that I've had to go and essentially throw my calendar in the trash and rebuild it from scratch in order to reflect the new business that I want to build. And your calendar leads your outcomes. And I truly believe that because what you spend your time on is what's going to show show up. And so if you have a caseload of, of 30 plus sessions, but you're saying, hey, I really want to manage a, a big, large practice, your calendar probably needs to shift because someone who manages a 30 person practice typically is not doing 30 clinical sessions a week. And vice and from there. Same with like, man, if I want a really great strategic plan for 2024, I have to change my calendar over the next four, four to six weeks to reflect the time needed to put in to build a strategic plan. So it's just my encouragement for you. Attilio and I are constantly having to ask the question: does my calendar give me the needed time and space to accomplish the largest priorities that I actually have for the business? And then I have to do the hard work typically, moving appointments, canceling things, changing rhythms to get the new reflection of what should fill it up. Yeah. Guys, good luck with this. It's really, really hard to do this. Yeah. I wish that it was easy, but new year, new me, right? You've got something on your side. Jan January 1st, you can be anything new. You can be anything different here. And um and if you let it, right? <laughs> yep. Jan one, you could be completely new and completely different if you let it. So. Two last quick things. Number one is close the chapter, close the book, close whatever analogy you want on 2023. Don't let yourself perpetually be in the same state. Create some sort of cyclical rhythm around how you approach and push into your business. What happened in 2023 happened in 2023. Close it, shut it down, complete the feedback loop, look at what happened, and set the trajectory, reset the trajectory for the new year. And you'll have open availability to create a new loop in 2024. And lastly, this is one of the things that we're doing really heavily, uh, exclusively kind of one to one with a lot of, especially our group practices right now. Uh, and over the next four to four to eight weeks, we have some processes and other things set up. So if you want some more direct help in terms of setting a more executable plan for next year, shoot us a message, reach out, leave a comment. Uh, we'd love to chat about getting you the resources and providing the insights needed to help you go to the next level. We'll see you guys.